Hey everyone, good morning uh, and welcome to uh, a new day, a new session as well. Let's begin this time with a word of prayer and then we'll get into our session. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for giving us this opportunity once again to just come into your presence and learn. Pray God that you will speak to our hearts and uh, that we will be rightly able to divide the word understand your word and apply everything that we learn about uh, into our lives and our ministries uh, and we will see the fruit in our lives again, not by our own strength but by your holy spirit we thank you we submit this time into your hands in jesus name we pray amen all right so uh let's just do a quick review uh last class we completed on chapter one we looked at understanding the vision of a cell church uh then we looked at uh, what a cell church is. Uh, it's a biblical pattern, meaning uh, we're not doing something of our own understanding. In the New Testament, we see that uh, you know cell churches, cell groups were functioning, and uh, and then we also looked at some of the characteristics of a uh, cell church. Right? Uh, best way to recapture families, discipleship, mentoring. Uh, best means of pastoring and evangelism uh, and many other aspects and uh, we also looked at oh you know some of the examples of cell churches and, uh, a classic example is that of uh, david young um uh, the oido full gospel church and how he was able to take this vision of cell groups and uh, you know in a, in a couple of years his church just grew exponential growth right he saw exponential growth he saw uh multiple multiplication of leaders discipleship mentoring and so we ended last class by talking about will this concept you know uh, you may say hey 1980s 1990s or even early 2000s people didn't have anything to do so they would come and sit in cell churches or settle groups. But what about now? We are 2023, 24. In 2024, will cell groups work? And uh, we talked about a, a few of that, right? Regardless of where we are, our cultural background, people by nature are, you know, we, we are built in a way to have relationships, like right? we talked about that. Uh, and also, secondly, we talked about how. Uh, by nature, you know, when 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 we have a small setting, people are more open to sharing their thoughts and uh, their their life problems and things that sharing life with each other, basically, right? But we also looked at a few challenges: long work hours, traffic, commute, one place to another. Uh, sometimes people don't want to meet anyone. Uh, you know, uh, they just want to be independent and go to church on Sunday. But I don't do anything more after that. So there will be these disadvantages, but uh, uh, in a sense, the cell model, the cell group model, or the cell church is something that can work in every city. Doesn't matter if it's 2024, whether it's 2034 or 2044. It is. It will work, right? And so I want to encourage each one of us, right? Uh, we may already be in our ministries. Uh, we may be cell group leaders, life group leaders. Uh, continue to build on that, right? Never feel that, hey, I'm not seeing fruit or, uh, you know, I don't see growth. It's all right, right? Just, just press on you know, and eventually you will see the fruit uh, because you're building God's kingdom, right? Now, let's go to chapter three. <clears throat> and we talk about the ABC 12 model. Uh, let me just present the notes so that way we can all uh, just look at that picture that I, I can see. Yeah, the APC 12 model. Everyone can see my uh, page, right? Okay. All right. So, so basically, the APC 12 model is adapted from the G12 model. Right? Uh, the G12 model was basically one leader looks after or mentors and disciples 12 people. So, if you look at this picture here, you've got one person and there are 12. Uh, you know, members in the life group. Now, why why 12? We talked about that as well, right? So 12 could be, not like because Jesus had 12 disciples. Uh, 12 is basically a number that can be, one person can 
oversee all 12 of them. Imagine you have 20 of them. So this one life group leader will be wondering, oh, I have 20. Uh, so I need to look into the lives of all these 20 people. It's not going to be easy, right? So uh, APC 12 model is adapted from the G12 model. And so we got a picture here again. And this is what we want to see at APC, right? So we've got one leader here, right? And 12 life group members, one life group leader, 12 life group members. Now, over time, what we want to see is this life group leader disciples and ministers these 12, and they go out and start their own life groups, right? And again, they have 12 people under them, and then the model just keeps multiplying, right? Uh, it, it just keeps going. So one to 12, and you have another 12, and then those 12 raise up 12 new life groups again. So it's just like a ripple effect. It just keeps going on. Uh, now, let's look at a few aspects on this, how the APC 12 model flows. Now, <clears throat> something that we do at APC is, uh, I just thought I'll share this. See, uh, most care cells or cell groups, what they do is they, um, so on Sunday, we have a church service everything happens there and in the cell groups they you know they have bible study or they pick up any topic that they'd like to study but at abc something that we'd like to follow is uh, we follow our sunday sermons so for example if you go to our website and in the website uh, if you go to uh, uh, ministries you go to sermon notes and uh, under each sermon or towards the end, you'll find the life group study material. So th something that we have incorporated at APC is that all life group leaders, you know, we, we discuss those, uh, what is preached on Sunday, right? Uh, so for example, last Sunday, we talked about tenacious faith. And, uh, and so there are a couple of questions, maybe three questions. The life group leaders listen to the sermon uh, and they come ready uh, to you know to just guide and um, direct the discussions in the group whereas in a cell group it could just be one person doing most of the talking uh, or the cell leader can do most of the talking and uh, that's not what we want to do but let's look at a few uh, aspects of the apc 12 model right Okay, one cell leader is responsible for discipling up to 12 people. Now, there are different kinds of life groups or cell groups, right? So this is something, again, what APC follows. Now, it's not necessary that you have to follow this, right? You can, if you start your own ministry, you're, you're already part of, a, uh, already leading a life group, that's good. Right? But something that we follow is, we try to meet the needs of those who are there right uh, now for example we have family life groups we have youth boys youth girls uh men only women and um, open life groups the open ones are basically anybody can come to those life groups now most churches have their have open life groups now, what we do at ABC is that since our main, uh, you know, our main goal is to disciple people, we have divided our life groups into this pattern, right? So only boys, only girls, families, uh, men, only women, uh, open. And, and the reason we do it is because now the life group leader, uh, imagine you have a young a youth, uh, a youth boy and a girl, right? Now, they both are part of a family life group. And this life group leader is in his, you know, maybe 45 to 50 year range. Now, what's going to happen? This life group leader, he's got a family group, but you've got two or three youth in that group. Their needs are not being met. 
So what's happening is the family, they are, they are very good leaders. They're looking after, they're able to minister to families because they're all in the same wavelength. Now, here you may have youth. Now they may be wondering, you know, okay, so I'm on a different season. Uh, I, I'm, in, I'm in college or I'm in, in the workplace. These are my set of problems. Now, the set of problems a family can have could be completely opposite to that of the youth, right? And so that is why we follow this model. We, we have 12 people and we've divided them into, uh, into different categories. And one of the things we noticed is that we see fruitfulness, right? We're seeing, okay, uh, the youth girls, they're able to, you know, connect with each other. You know, there's mostly these are the problems or these are the uh, situations that they are going through or the challenges that they are facing. Uh, and so there's this this kind of bonding and discipleship. When you go to youth boys, again, they they may be in a, in a different uh, sphere, meaning they have different their own problems or their own challenges. Uh, then you go to the families. So what is happening? Discipleship is happening. Right. So the leader is able to, you know, uh, zero in on ministering to them one on one. Right now, I'm not saying that, you know, ministering uh, a, a, a couple cannot minister to a youth boy or a youth girl. They can. Uh, but on an ongoing basis, uh, it's always good to have it in separate, you know, the age related categories. Now, the 12 cell members, uh, now I, I'm going to keep saying life groups and cell members interchangeably, so it's the same thing. Right? The 12 cell members are committed to one cell group leader. Right? Look at those two words, committed and to one. Now, for example, uh, there are 10 people in a life group. Right? All 10 of them are committed to that leader. Right, that one life group leader. Now, there are times when a life group, when a person may move to another part of the city. Right now, the option is to them. Right, so for example, in APC, we have a few folks who have moved across cities, uh, meaning uh, they've gone from north of Bangalore to south of Bangalore, but they're still connected to the life group that they were in before. Right. Uh, but then there are some of them who said, hey, I need to get to connected to the closest life group uh, leader. But as long as you're in a life group, you're committed to that one leader. Right? The cell group leader works with each of his 12 at a personal level. For what? To build them up and to bring them into a place of spiritual maturity. Right? And this is the core of life groups and cell groups that the cell group leader can work with each of them at a personal level right so for example you know uh, we have about 40 life groups another 40 life groups, about 33 percent of our church folks are part of life groups so that's probably about 300 or you know attendees and members are part of life groups across the city of Bangalore. now we don't know what everyone are going through, going through what challenge or uh, what season of life they are in. But the life group leader is the one who can work with them at a personal level. And later on, we'll talk about the responsibilities of a worship leader. Uh, but he works with them at a personal level. So for example, somebody you know, uh, uh, is looking out for a job. Now the life group leader knows. So he says, hey, I know you today you're going for an interview. I'm standing with you in prayer. Uh, just be bold, be strong, I'm praying for you, that, that God's wisdom will be upon you, that he will put the right words in your mouth, and uh, I'm there with you. Now, that one message or a call can really uplift this person. Now, you may have pastors, associate pastors, all of them. We may not even know that the person is looking for a job. But the life group leader knows, hey, in three or four months, this person is looking for a job. This is his financial situation. This is his, uh, you know, the season that he is in. Uh, and I've been working with him on a personal level. Uh, 
am. And, you know, there's this one-on-one -on -one connection. And what does this personal level of you know, connection do? It brings that person or the entire self into a place of maturity, spiritual maturity. Now, you can have people who are joining a life group and uh, uh, you know, initially they don't want to pray, right? Or initially they don't want to uh, you know, sing songs or raise their hands. But over time, the cell group leader is able to minister to them on a one on one basis. Say, hey, you know, this is what you can do. You know, prayer is not about fancy words. It's just about speaking your heart out to God. You're speaking to God. And over time, you'll see after one year, seeing this person is able to pray, not only in his personal time, but also uh, in, in public, he's able to pray. He's able to uh, uh, raise his hands in worship. What's happening? Because the cell group leader has been working with this person at a personal level. Now, the pastor can be on the pulpit. So they're going to say, or the worship leader will say, come on, let's raise our hands and worship. Uh, it's just a, that moment. But it is the life group leaders who begins to work on a personal level to bring that person to a place of maturity. Right? Over time, the life group leader encouraged each of his 12 to start their own group and begin discipling. Now, this is something at ABC that we... <clears throat> always uh, you know focus on and we encourage our life group leaders so it's never a place where hey i've got 12 people my life group is stronger than yours you have only nine people or you have only five people in your life group no the point of a life group to speak to star is to make sure that they're able to raise up leaders right and and uh, you know I would always say this, the greatest sign of a leader is not how many sermons he's preached or not how many uh, songs he's written or not how many times he's led worship on the stage. The greatest sign of a leader is how many leaders he has been able to raise. So at APC, the moment you're appointed as a leader, you need to plan your exit. Right? So meaning, okay, if I'm not sure who's going to come next, or now I've got 10 people. Okay, so I've got 10 new life groups that can start. Now I'm not saying that's you know it's going to happen overnight or it's going to happen in you know six, seven months or a year. It can take a long time. But the goal is everyone must be able to become leaders. Right? Now, of course, some of them in your life group may say, Hey, I want to become, I want to join the IT team. I want to join, uh, you know, uh, arts and entertainment, or I want to join the media team. That's wonderful. Right? Let them let them do what God has called them to do. Uh, but they've ra raised up to that level of leadership. Right. So wherever they go, they're able to lead a group. Right? They're able to disciple people, and that's what we want to see. Uh, the goal of the APC Twelve model, very important, is making disciples. And the cell group meeting is just a way to facilitate that process, right? So, so for example, when we say life group, people come. It is we are we are giving people an option to come and to minister with each other. Right? Uh, there's there's a lot of disciple personal involvement takes place. Right now, I we don't have to you know as life group leaders we don't have to tell them okay from today. You are, I'm going to make disciples. So you 12 are going to become my disciples. We don't have to say all of that. Right? Discipleship is not about, you know, Jesus didn't say, you know, uh, from now on, he, initially he didn't say anything, right? He just took them along, right? And so making disciples takes time, right? Yet uh, it is something that we must focus on as a church, right? Uh, eventually, every person will, will belong to two cell groups. One cell group where he's being ministered to by a cell group leader and one cell group where he ministers to others as a cell group leader. Now, uh, this is something that we need to talk about. This is not always, right? Now, remember, 
learning never stops. I can never say, hey, I'm a life group leader, so I will not, uh, you know, as leaders, we need also, right, uh, uh, personal connect. And, uh, uh, and so there will be times, like, for example, there's, there are a few, uh, two or three of them in, in, in our church at APC where uh, they are life group leaders, right? Now, they were part of a life group for about four or five years, right? And eventually they, we, you know, we saw that, okay, they are potential life group leaders. They've been in this life group for uh, five odd years. So I remember this very clearly. I spoke to the life group leaders and I said, release this couple. Let them go and start a new life group. And, uh, and so we helped them. We, we helped them start off. We got maybe, I think it was two couples started coming with them. And then this life group just grew. Right? But these, this couple, uh, you know, just recently he was telling me, I still go to the life group which I used to go to. But here they're also life group leaders. So there's nothing wrong in that. Right? Uh, there's nothing wrong in being part of a life group and also leading a life group. Right? If cell groups meet alternate weeks, uh, again, you can meet alternate weeks, you can meet weekly, uh, as long as there's some kind of fellowship that's happening. <clears throat> some most of our life groups in Bangalore, what happens is they uh, they do it uh, bi-weekly. So, for example, second and fourth Saturdays, so first and third Saturdays. Uh, then we have some of the girls groups which uh, which meet almost every week because they all stay very close by. Some of them stay in PGs, and so they're able to meet uh, on a regular basis. And then we have some family groups which meet. Uh, again, bi-weekly and weekly. So uh, that is uh, the choice of the uh, the life group leader, right? Now, our objective, sorry, if a cell group leader is able to, once all members have initial 12, have started their own cell groups, he can start another cell group of another 12. So basically, if this life group leader has 12 people under him and all 12 over time, maybe in two or three years, have been able to start their own life group. Now, it's not like this uh, life group leader says, OK, I've done my part. No, he can always go ahead and start other life groups. Right? Uh, our objective in becoming a cell church is not to have cell groups and cell meetings are objective in becoming a cell church is to make disciples right get this our objective at abc right now this is again what we want to follow right it is not just we have cell group meetings when i say cell groups meetings or cell meetings it's not like it's a we just want to have like mini church services everywhere. That's not the point. The point of having cell groups or becoming a cell church is to make disciples. That is the number one goal that we have. Now, different churches will have different reasons. Another church may say, hey, the number one reason we have for uh, you know, starting life groups or cell groups is evangelism. Another group may, another church may say, the number one reason we have on cell groups is because we want to do Bible studies. Right? So different churches have different goals and aspirations when it comes to cell groups. Look at the difference between APC's 12, APC 12 cell group model and the care cell model. Okay, now our goal, disciple making, care cells, evangelism and fellowship. Right? Now I'm not saying that in this portion we don't do evangelism and fellowship. And I'm not saying care cells don't do disciple making, right? It is there, it is they, they, they will be intervened with each other. Yet the main goal here is disciple making and the main goal here is evangelism and fellowship right? everyone with me you're able to understand this difference right uh, so don't get confused uh, 
cell leader's responsibility is to disciple the cell members and equip them to become uh, disciple makers. Now, <clears throat> look at this cell leader's responsibility. When it's a case of cell leader's responsibility is to conduct the cell meetings. Right? So make sure that the cell meeting goes on well. Right? Uh, uh, it, it should go on. There should be worship, prayer, uh, ministry time, or Bible study, answer questions. Cell should be conducted. Right? Now, again, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's not like this is the best. ABC 12 is the best model in care cells. It's not. Right? No. We're just trying to see the difference between them. Here, each person is committed to one cell leader. Here, people can visit any cell. Right? They can go anywhere. Right? They can go uh, to this cell group. Then next month, next two, two weeks, they can go to another cell group. Then they can go to another cell group. It doesn't really matter. Right? Each cell grows up to 12 people. And after 12, we... At APC, something we say is okay, 12 is the maximum, right? And then each of those 12, you disciple them, mentor them, teach them, release them as leaders to start their own life groups. But here, when a cell group, like David Yongi chose, remember, right? What he did was when the cell groups increased, he divided the cell groups. He said, okay, if there are 20 or 30 of them in the cell group, make it 15 and 15 and then go ahead and multiply it right and he was able to that's how he was able to do so uh, reach out and uh, start so many cell groups now here every person will become a leader a person can attend a care cell and never become a leader now, this is this is quite a discouragement right uh, when you look at it uh, a person can attend a care cell for maybe even two three years or five years never become a leader he's growing he or she's growing in the things of god there's fellowship there's uh, you know learning everything is there but he may never become a leader he may be just always there right uh, and so this is just a few differences between these two models so why the model of 12 god's number of fruitfulness and multiplication 12 tribes genesis 35, the way God multiplies his people uh, in Genesis 49. And when you look at God's government, the way God governed his people, uh, if, you, if you read Exodus, Leviticus, 12 was kind of a number which is constant, 7 and 12. It was always constant throughout the scriptures. So, so that's why we follow the ABC 12 model. Okay, before I go ahead, any questions? If you have any questions, uh, right? Okay, Divya says, can you give some examples of care cells? Right, sure. So Divya, we looked at the example of Lloyd uh, uh, Full Gospel Church, right? So let's let's let's. So we're not saying uh, you know Lloyd uh, David Yongicho's church is better than that church, or this church is not as good as this church. But as you said, an example of a care cell. Right? Best example is Yoido Full Gospel Church in South in Korea. Right? So David Yonggi Cho, what he did was when he started the church, uh, he started just like anybody else, a small church, right? And it began to grow. And then for many years, was the growth was very slow. So what did he do? He started these care cell groups. Now the point of this care cell group was more of Multiplication. The, the the main goal was multiplication to grow bigger. Right? So a care cell and a life group or a cell or a life group, they may have the same you know aspects to it. Is there gonna be Bible reading and prayer and worship? Yes. What about in a cell church or care cell? It's going to be there. There's going to be worship. There's going to be uh, reading of the word. There's going to be discussion. There's going to be fellowship. So there's it's interchanging. Right? They, they overlap each other. But one of the main differences of a care cell is that it 
most cases don't have disciple making as their concept right they have minister to one another but raising up of leaders is not very you know it, it's not much it does not much happen there but here at, at the epc 12 model we want to raise up leaders so if you see the we are, with, it's just two different names. Most of them, you know, most of the activities within them are overlap, right? But the goals are different. Right? The goals are different. You can have a, a, a church or a cell group with a certain goal, and here the goal remains constant. So we are doing evangelism, outreach, fellowship, all of that. Why? For disciple making. Here in a case cell, they're doing Bible study, fellowship, outreach, everything. Why? To raise up or to to have more people to increase in numbers or whatever the vision is for that case cell. And, uh, Divya, yes, go ahead. Divya. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Uh, I was getting confused with the terms like mm -hmm. care cell or cell church. I believe you mean care cell and cell church to be uh, equivalent, right? Yes. Okay. And cell group, life group uh, is the same. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. So uh, what uh, I was. Uh, assuming is that the care cells are like uh, uh, here in all in churches we do see uh, like groups based on the uh, different needs of people like uh, for example uh, grief care or maybe dis uh, disabled people together mm -hmm. uh, so it, it is basically on the basis of the needs and how easily they can relate so i was a bit confused with uh whether it is care cell or uh yeah yeah so it's not that kind of yeah so so the thing is here uh, thank you Libya. Uh, so uh so here if, if you look at uh, generally if you look at india as a nation and you look at the church and uh the nation of india uh some of the things that you know we have is like like you were saying right some people who are uh, you know disabled they have a cell that becomes a care cell right now in 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 as of now i, I think i haven't come across any group which meets that way but it's a wonderful concept right so uh, again, so they were, we're trying to say that it's not like we're saying, okay, APC is the, you know, is the, the go-to model. It's just trying to help us understand that uh, this is what we are doing. Right? Now, we may not have uh, cell groups. See, for example, one of the things that we're trying to focus on now is uh, we have few, uh, you know, we have divorced women. Right? Now they're lonely, they're alone, they need help. We want to start a cell uh, a life group. Where they can, you know, uh, minister to each other, right? Just, just because they are going through season in their life. Then we also wanted to start only men professional groups, so they're not going to talk about uh, Sunday sermon, right? Uh, they're going to talk about professional, right? Uh, what's happening in their workplaces, how to live a good life in the workplace, the challenges they face, and all of that. So that becomes a care set. Right, but when you have when when we say a cell group, it's more about it could be anybody, anyone from anywhere coming together. But the the, the you know the the context is to uh, grow in the things of God, right? So uh, so there's this thin balance there, yeah. right? Uh, and so very important is we never you know we can be part of a group now. Don't worry about okay, is this a care cell? Or is this a cell group? Doesn't matter, right? Uh, as long as you are able to grow, and you know, in maturity, grow the things of God, you're learning, that should be fine, right? And then one of the things that we 
always do is we inform our leaders, right? And we inform people, uh, people with joining the life group as well, right? If you want to serve in any area, if you want to take up, uh, uh, you know, any kind of volunteering area in the life group, just let us know, go ahead and do it, right? So that may not happen in a, you know, in a care cell. So you have one person, he makes sure that everything happens. So, so as we go ahead, Dipya, you'll, you know, you'll be able to, you know, slowly understand the difference between them. But I hope I was able to bring some kind of clarity to your question. Yes, yes, uh, sure, Pastor. Uh, just, uh, okay, just wanted to clarify as well. Uh, like, uh, I was not uh, saying uh, one is better than the other, but uh, yeah, I was just getting confused with the terms uh yeah. like life group and self uh, as of now i what i understand is a life group and cell group are the same and yes. cell and cell church are the same perfect that's perfect oh. okay. yes so uh, as in yes uh, yeah so uh you also said about the care cell being uh like uh it one uh, one of the objectives is multiplication. Maybe the for the example you said, yes. uh, it's it was multiplication. So I was uh, also thinking uh, like in that scenario, the G twelve model or that that works perfectly, right? If that was multiplication, the main objective. Yeah, but then what happens is so uh, in a care cell, you can have thirty people in the cell group. You can even have fifty people. Right, mm -hmm. uh, but here, uh, since discipling people or discipleship is the goal, we cannot have one leader look after thirty people. So you have just twelve people. So he ministers to those twelve, and those twelve become life group leaders. But here, in a case yes, there is multiplication, like more people are coming in, but less leaders are being raised. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So, so that's that's just the difference. The goals but, are different. Yes, the goals are different. So the only reason I keep saying, uh, sorry for it's confusing, uh, cell cell group and life group is because uh, here at APC we call it life groups, right? So uh, yeah, there are churches which call it just call it cell groups. Right? So, uh, so that's right. So cell group, life groups are the same thing. I just use it interchangeably. So. That's okay. clear. Yeah, thank All you. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, David. Thank you. All right. Shall we carry on? Everyone okay? I hope uh, everyone are on the same line. All right. Okay. We'll go ahead. Uh, I'm sure we'll uh, just get more clarity when we keep reading and keep going through it. Okay. The cell group meeting. Okay. Okay. I'll try my best not to say life group. Let's keep it as cell group, right? Okay. The cell group meeting. Um, now, in a cell group meeting, uh, the time limit we, we have set, again, this is we, okay, this is what we do, is 90 minutes to maximum 120 minutes. Now, you can do it for two hours, you can do it for one hour, you can do it for a good 45 minutes, but I feel that a 45 minutes would be too less to, uh, you know, on a personal level, it'll just be like coming and going away quickly. Uh, but make sure you have sufficient time for prayer, for fellowship, for ministry to one another. Um, you can meet once a week or once in two weeks. Can be flexible with the location so long as everyone is informed. So nowadays, what happens is, in, as soon as a life group is, as soon as a cell group is formed, um, uh, we ask the cell group leader, okay, start a WhatsApp group, put everyone in it, keep in touch with everyone. Right? So there are times when um, cell groups can especially the youth, youth boys, youth girls, what they do is uh, they meet once in uh, twice a month. So once they meet in a person in one of them's home, and then the second time they meet at a coffee day or a brother's time. Uh, right? And they sit, they discuss. It's not like they meet in Barista and then they only you know, keep wasting time. No. The point is they go through the whole sermon notes as well. They have, they have discussions. Uh, they pray and they close. They, they follow their uh, so they're flexible in terms of location. Right? And uh, again, uh, if you look at a care care cell, it 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 normally doesn't happen this way. Right? So here it's not very flexible. Normally, care cells are very rigid. Here you'll see there's uh, flexibility. 
in terms of timing as well you can have a care care cell uh, which is starts at for example 5 pm to 7 pm that's it 7 pm everyone back go but here you know you know cell group, you can go on 5 pm to 8 pm right I mean, it can just go on for some time, you know? just just so that it's flexible people are able to be there okay let's look at a few guidelines all members are encouraged to share and we ask that everyone speak openly and modestly so again Vivian, you see the difference now in a care cell not all the members are able if all the members are given an opportunity to speak you know, if there are 20 or 30 people in that cell group care cell you know, they're going to spend two hours there i mean just ask more people to share but sure in a cell group everyone are encouraged to share and in fact, we, what we do is we make everyone share at least one point. What did you learn on Sunday sermon? Tenacious faith. Okay, what did you learn? And so, for example, there are 12 of them sitting there. We say, what did you learn? Yeah. What, what, what is it that you learned? So it goes, everyone get an opportunity to speak. Right? Each person should feel safe about opening up. Right? Uh, but it's also important too uh, that we stress confidentiality. All matters within the group must remain in strict confidence. So, for example, uh, there's a person uh, in the group who is going through a, a financial world, and he has shared that with you. So, as a life group leader, never, if he has shared it in confidentiality, never bring that up. Right? Uh, or, for example, there's somebody who's going through uh, you know, problems in their marriage. Right, husband and wife, and uh, uh, never bring that up as a leader. If it's shared in confidentiality, it should be confidential. Right? But each person should be feel safe to open up and share whatever they feel like sharing. Right? Um, uh, we will reach out to our family, neighbors, friends with goals of bringing them to Christ. Again, part of evangelism. Um, we will keep interaction in line with what Christ is doing in our midst and refrain from storytelling that is irrelevant to the subject that is being discussed. Now, this could be, again, a, a, a difference, right? Since there's no open, not much of open discussions in a care cell, a person preaches or teaches, everything is done, they close and go. But here, since there's interaction, uh, Again, we need to have guidelines. We refrain from storytelling. So, for example, we're talking about tenacious faith, all life groups. Now, a person can, in the group, may say, uh, let's pray, let's uh, you know, discuss about Israel and Palestine. Now, it's a good topic, but that's not the time and the place to discuss it. So, that's where the life group leader comes up. He says, okay, you know, our discussion should be in line with tenacious faith and not Israel and Palestine. Israel and Palestine, we'll discuss another time. So that's what the leader does, right? Uh, here, we we encourage people that they should not murmur, gossip, condemn, be judgmental or criticize to the life group, cell group leader or to those who are in the cell group, right? Uh, never condemn or be judgmental. People are, remember that we're all a work in progress. You may have people uh, who are high in their maturity, in their thinking, people who are just, you know, they may be aged, but they mature in, in terms of maturity, they're very low. Right? So we don't be judgmental. Don't say, hey, how did you, you grow up so big, but why are you so childish? We, we don't do all of that. We give people time to do it. We work with them one on one. Um, Prayer in this area, uh, uh, this is an area where it can bring most growth and strength to the group, right? Uh, each cell member is encouraged to build up their own prayer life and praying for the church. Uh, sorry, praying for the group and praying for the ministries, everything. Right? So prayer is something that strengthens the group. It just gets everyone in unity with one another. And we, again, we always keep the vision of the church in mind. So in all people's church, the vision is to be salt and light, uh, the city and a voice to the nation. So 
even as you are discipling, even as you are ministering to people, you, uh, our, our main goal is to be salt and light, to be a voice. Right? Hey, that's the vision. Right? Now, now it's not like uh, you know people are sharing their thoughts or uh, you know you're discussing on the Sunday sermon, and it's not like I'm not fulfilling the vision. Uh, no, we are discussing the Sunday sermon. But our overall vision, foresight is that, okay, this is what I am doing. I'm fulfilling the vision of the church. Right? Uh, look at the sample schedule. Again, it's sample. So you can come up with your own uh, schedule, arrival, praise and worship, icebreaker, uh, share the vision, the cell group, word study. Look at this, 40 minutes, word study in open discussions. And this is what we want. We don't want these to be take priority, right? Uh, praise and worship is good. Icebreaker, just to, uh, you know, especially nowadays, the youth groups have these icebreakers. The family groups don't really have much. To do. Just get into the word. And 40 minutes, strong uh, discussion of the word, open discussions, and many life groups that I have gone to, uh, you know, uh, sometimes we I visit these life groups uh, and when I sit and watch these live groups, uh, the discussions go on to one hour, one hour, 20 minutes, and time doesn't really matter because there's so much to discuss about. Uh, and it's so wonderful to see that. We're so encouraged to see this happening. Uh, then prayer and ministry time, I just ministering to one another. Um, then you got the holistic cells, which is uh, provide a balanced emphasis. Right, so what we'll do is, uh, I'll just give you a brief summary of, uh, of what we're going to do next class. And this is uh, Jim Ingley, uh, he's developed this powerful tool. Right? Uh, he writes quite a few articles on the upward, inward, outward, and forward model. It was basically a, a model that he came up with to ensure that all cell groups are able to have a balance in everything that they are doing so it's not only ministry or it's not only discussion it's not only uh you know word but this is balance right and uh, so he came up with this upward inward upward model so we spent some time on this this is very important for us to understand this um, and then next class on friday we will start from uh this place the holistic cells upward Inward, outward, and forward. Right? So, any questions? Any questions? Any thoughts? I'm sure many of us here may have already started your life groups and our cell groups. And you know, um, if, if you're doing something that's already working, that's wonderful. Right? But if you want, you can, if you feel that, hey, I, I, I want to change the way I do um, uh, you know, cell group, I, uh, feel free to try out these. Um, you know, uh, these guidelines and the things that we are doing, uh, uh, but if you feel that okay, I, you know I feel, uh, I'm doing it this way, I'm seeing through, just continue with that. Uh, but but again, make sure that as a cell group or as uh, you're, you're able to go from strength to strength, make sure that you're not stagnant at one place. <clears throat> All right, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I'll catch, we'll catch up on uh, Friday and we'll continue with this chapter. We should be able to bring this chapter to a close next class. All right. God bless you all. Have a good week ahead. I'll see you.